Ibrahim alayhi salam, the Prophet Abraham, one of the most loved unto Allah. He was known as Khalil Allah, the friend of Allah. Why was he known as the friend of Allah? Because Allah tested him and he passed every test. He followed the instructions blindly. That was the gift of Allah. Subhanallah, amazing. He passed every test one after the other. My brothers and sisters, Ibrahim alayhi salam, one day left his child Ismail and his wife Hajar, may peace be upon them, in a desert where there was no water to begin with. If there's no water, there's no food. There was no water, there was nothing. It was a desert, arid, sandy and rocky. And what did he do? He started walking away. His wife, knowing the loving man, the kind man, the man who fulfills the rights of his family and so on, she knew there's something happening here. We're traveling, we've come to this valley. We're left with not much, there's no water, there's nothing here, there's no people. And this man is leaving me and my child, a child he loves because he got the child after years of trying, years. Allah blessed him with a child later on in his life. He was much older. And so she asked him a question. Did Allah instruct you to do this? The answer was in the affirmative. Yes. She knew, that's it, Allah will take care of us. What and how, I don't know. But the conviction, it's there. Conviction is probably one of the most powerful, powerful acts of worship that would cushion the problems that you face, the issues, the difficulties, the hardships, and they would make you look forward to a solution or the solution. And at times, the solution may be delayed, but the conviction will keep you afloat. So when things are not going your way and every one of us has different challenges in life, be convinced that Allah has the solution and it is coming. When the time is right, it will come. And if the time is not right on earth, trust me, you're going to get something amazing in the hereafter. But you're going to have to bear patience with the conviction. Conviction alone would not get you to the optimum level of ease. But you need to bear patience and together with that, there is one more thing. Allah has given every one of us a capacity. He's given us strength. He's given us some form of ability. You need to use that capacity, the ability and your strength to try to achieve what you want to achieve and what you need to achieve. I want to go to Saffron, for example, on Thursday night. I need to make a plan. No matter how much conviction I have that Allah is going to get me there, if I'm just going to sit at home without making an effort, I'm not going to get there. Not at all. Maybe a miracle might happen, but you know, these days we're not saints on that level. Subhanallah. You need to make an effort. So make the effort and be convinced, inshallah, Allah will guide my effort towards achieving something. And if you did not make it for some reason, guess what? Just thank Allah. Oh Allah, you saved me from something bigger. We were delayed not too long ago on one of my journeys. And when we finally got to leave, people were complaining, hey, we're late, we're late. I said, no, don't worry. Perhaps Allah knows something. It's okay. I was asking brother Shaquille, you've known me for many years. When last have you seen me angry? He said, nah, I haven't. Just the one something happened and you know what? Because why? You have to hand your affairs to Allah. Be convinced that whatever's happened, you know what? I don't understand it. It might not have been so good, but it's okay. It's Allah in charge and in control. Come on, that conviction. Bear patience with it. As we were traveling, we saw a massive accident where there was a fire. And the cars were in flames. And I thought to myself, had we been five minutes earlier, perhaps... We may have been a part of this mangled metal that you can see. So that was Allah. He delayed you. It's okay. No problem. Someone's being difficult in your life. It's okay. 
Allah will create ease in other ways. Allah will give you little successes that wouldn't have come in your direction had this one come to you. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, his wife Hajar was convinced. She had that conviction, number one, number two, she was patient. And number three, she used her energy to get up and start the search. What are you searching for? I don't even know. What are you looking for? <laughs> I don't know. Tell us again, what is it that you want? Well, I'm going up Mount Safa and then I'm coming down and I'm going up Mount Marwa to try and see if there's any sign of life. If there is a single bird in the air, I'd be able or in the sky, I'd be able to know there's water somewhere. I'd go there. That's how intelligent they were. If you and I were in the desert, well now, had it not been for that story, I wouldn't have known. If we were in a desert looking for water, we wouldn't bother looking for where the birds are. Unless you're an expert. Bird watching, mashallah. My, br my brothers, my sisters, here is a woman. She's making an effort. Allah loved it so much. So much. Because you know what? You don't even know what you're looking for, man. And you know what? You've left it to us. You're convinced and you're patient without complaint. Allah says, we're going to make this memory eternal. The Hajj will be compulsory upon everyone who can manage right up to the end of time. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to make them run through Safa and Marwa and they won't even know why. Why do you run through Safa and Marwa? Have you thought about it? Because it's the instruction of Allah. That's the answer. I want to ponder over what a woman did in order to survive with her child. How many women are taking care of their children single-handedly? They suffer, they struggle to make ends meet, to meet deadlines, to help them go to school, to come back to... And they face all the difficulty and hardship. This is a day we pray for you. May Allah grant you success in every way. May Allah take you to paradise without reckoning through the green root. May Allah Almighty open your doors and fling open the doors of His mercy for you. It's a struggle today. Tomorrow you shall smile. It's difficult. Where do we get this from? The story of Hajar and Ismail. Guess what? Miraculously water started gushing. Water started gushing and it didn't just gush for a little bit. It gushed in such a way that it kept on flowing and it kept on flowing. And you and I who are Muslims who have been to Mecca have actually seen this well. What was it? The effort of a woman, the conviction and the patience. If I am convinced about Allah's plan for me, and I try my best to achieve what I believe is beneficial and I bear patience upon what happens in the process. Allah will open your doors. But you know when? When the time is right. It wasn't one round. She didn't just go Safa to Marwa and suddenly the water gushed. No. Allah knew the water was going to gush. How many times? Seven times.